Hello once again everyone, it's Bob Martin, the RC sub guy with the Nautilus drydocks.com. Got a really unique boat to share with you, something from the Australian Navy. What you're looking at, in case you don't recognize it, is the Australian Collins class diesel electric attack submarine rendered in 154th scale. Now that makes it a very significant 60 inches in overall length and uh, it has some presence as you can tell. Now this particular boat, despite all of the amazing details and everything that you see, was completely 3D printed from the files uh, originally drafted by Randy Sanders and now available for purchase and download on the NautilusDryDocks.com. You can really see that the builders who took this project on went the extra mile. The uh, hull is perfectly smooth and they scribed all the anechoic tiles on the boat. It really gives it you know, a next level amount of realism. And then there's some really nice subtle weathering. You can see all of the um, rivets and, and bolt heads have been highlighted in silver. There's some really subtle streaking for weathering going on. All of the cleats and everything have been rendered out here as well. And then these really cool um, you know, side sonar deals that, uh, that go down have some really neat detail as well. Fitment is really, really nice. You can see the seam here is, uh, is virtually indistinguishable from the rest of the hull. For a power plant, we are looking at uh, nothing less than a four inch OTW dive module that you can see right there. Uh, we modified it a little bit from the standard system because we needed the additional ballast tank capacity because this boat does have a pretty significant freeboard. We've done it before, uh, we really like doing it. So we've actually vented the ballast tank in here. So this is a low pressure pump style ballast system. So this is vented up uh, through the uh, masts in the sail here, um, which means that we have full use of the entire capacity of that ballast tank and that pump is not fighting air pressure. Um, so your battery lasts longer and you fill and empty the tank in a much smaller amount of time. Taking a look at the uh, cylinder here, you can see all of the fun things that we've got going on. We've got the remote on-off switch. So once uh, everything is all tested back at the shop and buttoned up, um, you don't need to open up the model again. We've got our uh, forward servo here that operates these functional fair water planes in the sail. The solenoid valve and pump for the main ballast system. Uh, and then there's a speed controller underneath that handles the operation of the pump. We got our ballast uh, tank here, uh, a radio link, uh, eight channel receiver that pairs up to the radio link transmitter that we've got in there. Two servos, one for the um, left bank of rudders and one for the right bank of rudders. And then the uh, large upgraded drive motor for the main propeller. And then underneath we've got uh, our electronic speed controller as well. Power comes from a large five amp hour sealed lead acid battery that lives in the wet up front in the boat. Um, some of you may not realize this, but sealed batteries, uh, lead acid batteries are perfectly happy living in the water. You just need to make sure that you uh, keep these terminals greased so that you minimize the amount of corrosion that you see on your connections. What we're going to do now is crack into the boat and I'm going to show you how everything gets installed, uh, goes together, how we get into the boat, uh, and then eventually we'll show you some footage of it on and under the water. So hull access is always an important feature and this one is actually really cool because no tools are required. There's a little slider switch back here and you just simply slide that forward it releases the back of the boat you can lift up here pull the upper hull off and now you've got full access to the interior taking a look in here you can see we got flotation foam in here we've got uh, a lead for the led lights which are in the sail of the boat up here 
We got the linkage for our uh, Fairwater planes. And then uh, that's pretty well it, all the flotation foam. Um, here is the intake for the ballast system. And I guess it would be the output for the ballast system as well. And then the, uh, the entrance for the periscope that you put your 2.4 gigahertz antenna that leads up to the very top of the sail there. So we're just gonna set this aside and take a look at the interior of the boat. Now to get things ready to go, uh, it's super simple. We're just gonna take our battery, the lower edge goes in and you drop it down. Now it's nestled in there, it's not going to go anywhere. The other thing I want to note before we go a little bit further here, this is a 3D printed hull and you can see, you know, the faint striations and everything in there that are evidence of a 3D printed boat. But what we did is we've laid up a layer of four ounce fiberglass over the entire lower hull. And that lends a lot of strength and stability to all of the seams of the boat, turns it into a much stronger hull. We did the same thing for the aft part of the, uh, the upper hull as well. Uh, looking in the back, let's take a look at some of the linkages here because this is an X-tail boat. Um, you can see that the top left and bottom right control surface are linked together with this yoke. And then the same thing is going on uh, here with the top right and lower left. So these work together in conjunction with each other. So for example, if both are pulled at the same time, the boat will turn to the right. And if both are pushed, it will turn to the left, and if you alternate them, um, the boat will dive and surface. So that's kind of how those X tails work. And then we've got our main drive shaft here, very nice and smooth, no binding or anything like that. So let's uh, let's get everything put in there. That is a very simple process. We're gonna take our boat, and we got these knurled nuts. They're gonna go into these holes. And as you slip it forward, you just take this spline shaft, line it up with your universal joint there. And once you do, just push everything back. That locks in, the magnetic connections lock in. Everything is done at the back. That's all we need to do. Now up at the front, we've got a little hold down. You can see we've got it like a saddle in the front for those same knurled nuts. And we're just gonna take our hold down block here and uh, slip it over and then we'll grab a wrench and uh, tighten down that bolt and that's going to lock this down. We take our power connections, slip them on over the battery terminals there and like I said it'll be a good idea otherwise what ends up happening you get this green corrosion on there just put some clean that all off and put some grease on there before and after every run. Of course, alternatively, what you can do is uh, replace those with a waterproof connector, which wouldn't be a terrible thing either. This is all installed now and ready to go. So what we can do, turn on our radio. Then we've got our fob here. We'll make sure that this is centered and we'll turn on our cylinder. Now we can check all the functions. Let's start at the back here. We've got our left and right controls, and this is on the left stick. I'll go like this so you can see, left stick. The reason it's set up this way is because I've actually configured this as an airplane, and it's using the built-in mixers in the transmitter to control mixing these uh, two channels. So there's no separate module for X-tail controls, which is pretty cool. But now you've got your rudder on your left stick, and then your uh, up and down pitch, on your right stick. We got our throttle, nice and smooth and quiet. Forward, reverse. This boat has a lot of get up and go, as you will see later on. And then on the back here, uh, the Fairwater planes, which I actually didn't use very much at the, uh, at the pond, but that's on the switch at the back. You pull it down to dive and uh, back up to surface. And that uh, controls your depth via the fair water planes. Now what we need to do is hook everything up. We'll get the upper hull put in place. 
So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take our LED lead, and we're going to plug that in right here. And you can see our LED lights are on. We've got green on the right, red on the left, and then we've got an aft light. These do a tremendous job of it, adding additional visibility to the boat. Um, now we're going to take our 2.4 gigahertz antenna, feed that through, and we're going to take our hose here and connect that to this little nipple on the tank. So we slip the forward part of the hull in. And you just heard the magnetic uh, connection for the Fairwater planes click into place. Push this all the way forward, push down, slide our lock into place. And now we've got everything buttoned up, ready to go to the pond. You can see um, we're ready to drop it in the water. So one last thing to note before you put it in the water, do make sure that the antenna is sticking up out of the top of this mast here. That is how the boat communicates with the transmitter and the transmitter with the boat. Uh, if this goes down too much, this is aluminum, so you might get uh, reduced range. You don't want that. That needs to be up at top. Let's talk about how this thing works at the pond. Now, you're going to see one of the first things is quick. Uh, it's got a lot of get up and go, uh, a lot of speed. Um, at full throttle, fully surfaced, it'll tend to pull air from the surface. You'll get a lot of bubbles uh, and such. Um, but when it's fully submerged, it really becomes in its elements and it has a tremendous amount of speed. The other really cool thing is surfaced or submerged, you're going to see a really tremendous response to pitch and yaw inputs. Again, thanks to those really cool X-tail rudders in the boat. Uh, just so you know, the research that I've seen shows that X-tail rudders are 1.4 times more effective than a standard cruciform setup in a, a submarine. So you get increased uh, turning performance and better response to pitch inputs as well. Now, one thing that I didn't use, didn't have to use, was the Fairwater planes. Um, because it does have it, there's a lot of options that you can have here. You could potentially hook those up to one of our depth keepers or depth control modules. Um, so it would maintain depth. Now this is a 2.4 gigahertz boat, so it does need to stay at periscope depth at all times. If it strays below periscope depth, there's an integrated fail safe in the boat that will automatically tilt the Fairwater planes up, cut the throttle, and put the stern planes to full surface so the boat will coast its way back up to the surface again. Another thing that is a feature of this boat, it is ballasted in such a manner that it is positively buoyant at all times. So when it's fully ballasted with the ballast tank full of water, um, there's just gonna be like a half inch of tower visible on the top. That little bit of positive reserve buoyancy is just a safety precaution in case something happens um, with the exception of a catastrophic flooding of the watertight cylinder, it will eventually find its way back up to the surface again. So all in all, a tremendously fun boat. It is not currently set up with um, automatic uh, pitch control. Uh, I found I didn't really need it, but it could certainly benefit from it. Now because there's X tails in the back, you can't use a, a standard pitch controller with it. Um, there is a unit put out by Engel of Germany called the DLX3 that combines X-tail mixing and pitch control. So I would highly recommend if you have an X-tail boat, that could be a good solution to control it. Okay, let's talk about that fail safe again, just so that you can see it in action. So we got control of our Fairwater planes here. You can see them in action. Uh, our stern planes are all working. So let's pretend you're driving along at uh, third throttle. You're going up and down, you're diving the boat, and you inadvertently dive below periscope depth. It's really not a problem. You'll maintain uh, control until about an inch or two below the surface. But if it does go below that, the receiver on board will automatically know that it's lost communication with the transmitter and it'll initiate the fail-safe routine 
I'll show you what that looks like by faking a loss of signal by turning off the radio. So you can see what happened. The boat immediately cut the throttle. Fairwater planes went to full surface, as did the stern planes. In functional, practical application, you'll be driving along, you get below periscope depth, you lose signal, the boat says, oh, I better get up to the surface, comes straight back up. As soon as that breaches the surface again, it regains signal and you are right back to where you started again. So it's a really cool system, all integrated directly with the transmitter and receiver. There's no separate modules or anything like that. Uh, it's a really cool fail-safe uh, system. And like I said, in the case of extremely you know, far and maybe you were going backwards when this happened, the boat is positively buoyant. It will be coming back up again eventually. So with that, I am happy to say that this Collins class uh, submarine is complete, tested, passed with flying colors, and we're getting ready to box it up on its way to the new owner. We had a blast building it out, upgrading it, refitting it, and above all, testing it at the pond. I hope you enjoyed watching this boat in action. If you like what you see, please do like and subscribe to our channel. It helps us out a lot. If you have questions or comments, you can put a comment below, but I highly recommend for speed of response, you reach out to me directly, bob at nautilusdrydocks.com. And with that, we're gonna let you go. Have a great day and we will catch you next time.